Do you consider yourself a movie critic? Or are you a trivia master? We'll find out on this episode of MSU Tonight. Welcome to MSU Tonight. I'm Hunter Willis. And I'm Mallory Halava. Later on in the show, we'll have a chat with the SGA president. Then he's going to stick around to play a trivia game, and you won't want to miss that. That sounds like fun. We'll also be finishing the show out with a talking about the popular new movie. We'll have more on that later. Now it's time for Hot Topics. <laughs> February is known as Black History Month. This week, Black Student Council and the Office of Multicultural Initiatives hosted events to share black culture among students. On Monday, students, faculty, and staff played bingo over dinner in Winslow Dining Hall. Participants answered questions about those who played an important role in black history. Players not only won prizes, but also had the chance to learn more about black culture. More events by Black Student Council are to come. On Thursday, you can attend the panel discussion, Being Diverse in a Professional Society, at 5 p.m. at Freed Curd Auditorium. On Friday, the council invites everyone to a talent show at 6 p.m. at Mason Hall. To know more about future events, follow their Instagram, at MSUBSC. Every semester, the MSU Art Department and University Galleries have many exhibits on the sixth floor of the Fine Arts Building. Colorado-based artist Donald Fodness had an artwork on display recently. The exhibition consisted of 2D and 3D pieces. The art of students in a professional practices class will be displayed on the walls of the Mary Ed McCoy Hall Gallery, February 12th, 20th. The exhibit will be available for viewing until March 13th. The gallery is open to the public and free of charge. The Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences will welcome Dr. Christopher Gunn from the Kentucky Heritage Council. This is the start of their Spring Environmental Sciences Seminar Series. Dr. Gunn will present on a topic involving ceramic petrography in Mexico between 600 AD and 1000 AD. This seminar is Friday, February 21st from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. in room 320 in the Blackburn Science Building. Don't go anywhere. There's more to come on MSU tonight. Stay tuned. Welcome back to MSU Tonight. I'm joined in the studio by SGA President Trey Book. Welcome to the show, Trey. Well, thank you for having me, Mallory. I'm really excited to be here tonight. Um, can you tell us a little about what you do in SGA? So what I do in SGA, um, my big role is obviously SGA president. It's kind of two different roles. I'm SGA president and I'm on the Board of Regents. So for SGA, uh, the SGA portion is I'm Supposed to, I'm just represent the student body. I'm here to listen to needs, concerns um, of students, get feedback on how to improve student life, any needs um, that students need that are not being met, um, stuff that students want to see on campus. You know, right now we're about to redo the Kerr Center, and so I'm asking every student I get the chance to um, about feedback of what they would like to see um, in the Kerr Center in the coming years. Um, and then on that Board of Regents side, it's bringing, making sure that the board itself is um, keeping the student aspect of student life at the core of every decision that we make. Uh, because every decision that is made from the top down um, affects students and should be made with the student in mind. Awesome. Um, can you tell us like a little about how you got involved? in SGA? Right, of course, yeah. So I got involved with SGA um, because I, f with my other experience, I was summer orientation counselor for two years. Summer, uh, I was a student ambassador, I'm in part of Greek life, and I've done a lot of other different leadership um, positions, been a part of them. And the main thing, the common denominator between all of them that I've loved is working um, with student life, working with um, students for students. Um, and so whenever I was presented the opportunity to run for SJ president last year, I took it um, and I've ran with it and that's actually why I've decided to run again for SJ president this year. Okay, um, what are, are you like a senior or? 
Yes, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a senior. I'm from Henderson, Kentucky. I'm a business marketing major. Okay, um, and I know you mentioned that you changed majors. Why did you do that? So originally coming to school, I was a biology pre-med major. And the first semester of my sophomore year is whenever I changed to business marketing. Uh, I always thought before college I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, you know, I rounded with some doctors and surgeons back home my senior year and I loved it. But then I got to school and started taking all those biology and zoology, yeah. physics, chemistry classes and I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no, something's wrong. This is not, <laughs> this is not for me. Um, so I talked to, you know, my ment some mentors back home, um, alumni that actually, he's the reason I'm here at Murray. Talked to him. He's a doctor back at home that I used to work for. My parents, friends, my advisor um, at the time, and, you know, I just um, settled on business marketing. You know, I've always loved talking with people and really getting to know uh, why people um, do the things they do, specifically why do consumers buy the th the products that they do mm -hmm. and so that's kind of led me into marketing obviously so awesome that seems like a good fit for you <laughs> um, yeah, so far can you tell us about like your favorite experience as SGA president my favorite experience so far as SGA president has definitely been uh, being able to be a part of the racers and power campaign um, that's something that I ran on last year um, that I've continued to work on is um, the mental health issue on campus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, across the United States, um, mental health is on the rise just mm -hmm. within the general population, but more specifically talking here in higher education on college campuses. Mm -hmm. And so really, um, you know, our committee is formed, you know, it's us, um, SGA student representatives, um, the student engagement and success, you know, student affairs office, a representation from different academic areas, the wellness center, you know, a lot of different offices have come together, a lot of very smart, a lot smarter individuals than I am, um, have come together to create this campaign and do host different events where we can really help get the word out about the different resources that we have on campus um, about mental health um, and how to help students with that and to and which another huge aspect of that is erasing the stigma that's behind mm -hmm. mental health you know it's okay to ask for help it's okay to go to counseling services if you need someone to talk to so definitely you know because i know every day almost every day i hear another student that um, has had to drop out or is need to be um, has gone to counseling services again and again which is good that they're seeking out that help but mm -hmm. i want to understand what about our student life is causing this stress? Is it something that we as a university control or is it something that we can help with? So. That's a really good thing. Um, since you're so involved on campus, what would you say to someone who wants to get involved for the first time? Uh, definitely just first, I'm glad they're getting involved. You know, it's scientifically proven, and I don't have the research, so you'll just have to believe me on <laughs> okay. it, is that um, it's scientifically proven that students that are involved have higher graduation rates. They're happier after college. They're happier during college. You know, they, they graduate and become productive members of society. And so it's great for students to get involved, and that's the number one piece of advice that I tell students at a racer day or whenever I'm giving them a tour or whatever it may be summer orientation but then once I say that I say find what you're passionate about find what you love because once you find what you love you're n you'll never work a day in your life you know yes you know for me with the example of being SGA president yes it's stressful some days um, there's some days that I just want to go home and go to bed but at the end of the day I love it um, you know I, I have never felt like it's a hard thing for me to do just mm -hmm. because I love what I'm doing um, so definitely you know for students just reach out just find whatever you um, have e have ever had a inkling towards that you've ever thought oh maybe this is super interesting let me follow that because that's what we're here in college to do is to broaden our horizons and really find out who we are as an individual and what we want to do what we're passionate about so awesome well thank you for joining us tonight no problem thank you for having me coming up after the break we'll see if Trey can answer some questions about Murray State stay tuned Welcome back, I'm Carter Porter, and tonight we're going to put Trey's Murray State knowledge to the test. All right, Trey, first question. When was Murray State founded? Oh, easy question. 1922. All right, first one was easy. What is the oldest building at Murray State? So it's actually a trick question because there's two buildings. So Oakhurst is actually the oldest building because it was built before the university was founded. But then Rather Museum is the oldest building built for campus because it was the first building 
built for campus whenever campus was founded. I'm asking the questions and I'm <laughs> learning something. All right, name two current ex-Murray State basketball players in the NBA. Oh, uh, Ja Morant and, um, oh goodness, athletic questions are going to mess me up. Um, not for sure. Oklahoma City Thunder, a little help. Um, hmm. I don't know about that one. Cameron Payne and oh. Isaiah Cannon, oh, both in the know. league. Yep. True or false, Murray State has had a female president. False. True. Oh, no, that is Dr. true. Dr. Strupp, yep. 1983 to 1989. No, no, that was true. What is the new football coach's name? Uh, coach Hood. Correct. Dean Hood from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. What is the most popular uh, major here at Murray State? Occupational safety and health. Nursing. Oh, nursing. Mm. True or false, men make up 61% of uh, the student population. It's false. That is correct. It is women make up 61%. All right, how many square feet is Priced Oil Fine Arts building? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, wow. Uh, I don't even know a guess to that. Just goodness, that's a anything. lot. Bigger than you think. Yeah, no, that's a lot. Um, Five hundred thousand square feet. Not that big. One hundred sixteen thousand four hundred seventy-five <laughs> feet. All right, last one. This okay. is almost an impossible question. So. Okay. In the fall of two thousand and three, how many students from the country, Zimbabwe, went to Murray State? Why in the? Okay. Um, six. One. Oh. That's all we got for uh, trivia. <laughs> Next up, Hunter and Emily will be discussing a newly released movie. Don't go away. Welcome back. In today's segment, we'll be breaking down a recent movie. Today's movie is Harley Quinn's Birds of Prey. Emily, what are your thoughts on the new movie? All right, I saw this movie Saturday, and let me just say, it was pretty good, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> I kind of feel that. Um, uh, how do you think it compares to uh, Suicide Squad in the sense of Harley Quinn? All right, so in Suicide Squad, it's not supposed to be about Harley Quinn, but they literally, like, make most of the movie about Harley Quinn for some reason, and they, like, had a ton of extra scenes that they didn't even use because they didn't have time with Harley Quinn and the Joker. And so I think they tried to tie more of that in when they made Birds of Prey because I know some theaters actually changed the name of the Birds of Prey to Harley Quinn mm -hmm. because, like, people were like, what the heck is Birds of Prey? I'm not going to go see that. I don't even know what that is. And I guess her name is like more recognized and they decided to use more shots of her with the Joker in their backstory in Birds of Prey mm -hmm. to like, it was like a movie about Harley Quinn and that's it. Yeah, like I, I feel like because they didn't enjoy Jared Leto's version of the Joker, they didn't really include him into this yeah. next Harley Quinn. Okay, okay. Yeah, so literally, me and some other people were talking about the movie. They didn't really show his face at all. And when they did show the Joker, they showed like cartoon versions of him mm -hmm. with Harley Quinn. And they showed like the back of his head or something like that. And we think that they're going to bring in somebody different to play the Joker in a movie that's going to come out in the future. They're probably going to use someone different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you feel about the uh, new characters that they introduced? Okay, so the Black Canary, I loved her character. I mm. loved it. I love that they used a woman of color to play that character. Um, the other woman, the, the cop, I can't remember her name. It's, it escapes me at the moment. but yeah. yeah, she was really good, too. She had, like, a backstory. All of them had these intricate backstories, like the hunter or the Huntress, mm -hmm. she, she had a backstory too, and it was so complicated, like she would have her own movie or something. It was so long. Yeah, um, I feel like the way the storytelling went in Harley Quinn's new um, uh, movie was very backwards compared to what it, other movies would tell the story yeah. as. It, it, jumped, it jumped from like, she'd be saying a backstory, and then she'd go, oh, in this backstory, it was I'm almost also gonna family say guy this esque. thing too. It was almost Family Guy-esque. The way they yeah. use flashbacks. And she voiced over the flashbacks too and like it was 
almost like Deadpool because it had like the doodles like mm -hmm. in Deadpool where they doodle and he'll voice over to a very comedic way of telling the story yeah she's like the female version of Deadpool probably gonna mm -hmm. get a lot of hate for saying um, how do you feel the uh, all, mostly female cast affected in the movie it felt really natural for some re like I love that they had a female director too mm -hmm. and it didn't feel like they forced everybody to be like okay we're using all females blah 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 you have to deal with it or whatever um, mm. the two villains were guys but everybody was okay with that and it's like I liked that they were all females feminism mm -hmm. it, it felt really um, uh, felt really natural compared to like the latest uh, Marvel movie the Avengers where yeah. they just had that scene where all these females are yeah, just and they, like threw in Captain Marvel last yeah it was minute. like it felt bleh. Like they were just forced there and crammed. Yeah, they go, oh, we got to, times are changing. We got to get this audience, too, to like this movie. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel the, uh, like, where, is there more to Harley Quinn? Do you think there's going to be a future sequel of okay. some sort? Am I allowed to say spoilers? Or no? I'll just leave no. some stuff out then, I guess. Okay, so in the story, they're supposed to be getting something, but... It's like, the, okay, they're supposed to get a diamond, and that's how they, like, squad up all the females. And they kind of forget about the diamond, and it's more about Harley Quinn versus the Black Mask. And, like, the diamond's like a subplot they don't really care about anymore. And it's more about um, Harley Quinn facing the evil in Gotham and her bringing together this band of women to clean up the city. Well, hopefully everyone can enjoy um, uh, Harley Quinn's new movie, Birds of Prey. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and tune in to MSU Tonight every Tuesday night at 5 on MSU TV or visit us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash MSU Tonight. Have a good night and so long, partner.